Hello, today we're going to make a coffee mug with a dripper, a pour over dripper that sits inside the coffee mug. So, cheers, here's some coffee. Mm. It just fits in there and it has its own handle and the cup has its own handle. I'm going to show you how to make a, a one by four size so that you can use your dripper for uh, a four cups of coffee, uh, not just for the one cup, so it's more versatile. So then we take uh, one of these little filters from a one by four and open it out and use it as a template to make the pour over. So it's all very simple and easy and um, I think you should enjoy. Wait your clay until you feel that it's got no air bubbles left in it, then press it down and throw it like a pizza, uh, trying to keep it roundish um, until it's quite nice and thin. Then you need to put your guides on either side to roll it with a cloth over it and also a cloth underneath it if you're working on a table surface so it doesn't stick to the table and then roll it until it's about six millimeters thick. You don't want a coffee mug to be very heavy so you want to work fine for this project. If your guides aren't thin enough then just keep rolling until it goes nice and thin. Cut the seam away from your template coffee filter, then open it out and put it on your slab of clay. You want to cut it a little bit bigger than your template because the clay will be shrinking around 14 to 15 percent. So just leave a seam of about uh, a centimeter around the template. Also then check all the different parts that you need. For your mug you need half a, the size of a, a telephone page and there's an advertisement for Cape Town, our beautiful city. So you just fold it in half and then check that it fits your wine bottle uh, and let it overlap by about two centimeters so that you can join it with the seam showing just for fun. Just look at all that extra clay I have so I can easily make another mug or a taller jug. Cut around your template at least a centimeter bigger than the template because it's going to shrink about 14 to 15 percent and you want it to still fit the uh, coffee filter once it's fired. So you need to cut out a little strip that is the stand for your coffee dripper and just work out the length that it needs to be once it's wrapped around and leave it to dry in a curved shape to leather hard before you join it. It's much easier then. Then cut out three discs 
for the base of the coffee mug, for the base of the dripper and also for a little stand to put your dripper on. I think you should just make them all the same size of the bigger disc because um, I know I made the mug base too small for mine, I had to cut a bigger one later. You need to cut it much bigger than your wine bottle because the clay goes around the wine bottle. Scratch and slip the overlapping join of your mug and press it firmly together without letting the join disappear and then scratch and slip all around the base of the mug and also all around the outside of your disc for your base, for your bottom of your mug. Don't let any slip go on the glass of the wine bottle or else the wine bottle might stick when you try and pull it out. Then you need to put the wine bottle mug onto the base and cut around it just a bit bigger than, than you need it so that you've got a bit of clay to pull up over that join with a credit card. Pull up the clay with a bent credit card, putting your thumb in the center so that it's rounded the shape of the mug. And then also be careful you don't press the wine bottle down into the base of the mug, otherwise you might dent the base. Then smooth it all around the join as well as you can with your thumb and your fingers. And then take the bottle out with a twisting action. Then you can leave your mug to dry to leather hard and make your two handles and leave them in a curved shape until they leather hard. I left my dripper to be too dry so I wet it up on both sides and I left it to, to soak the water in for about 20 minutes while I worked on my mug. Don't try and bend it straight away if you've had to wet up your slab. You don't want it floppy, but you don't want it too stiff either because it will crack when you bend it. Then you can take your mug and take the, the paper out of it and you need to join the inside joins very well. The base you need to put a little coil of clay in and the seam up the side of the mug you can try and just push in with a modeling tool. Once the coil is nicely joined in the base of the, of the cup, you can work on the rim of the cup, wet it a little bit with a sponge, and then bend it over your fingers so that it's pointing outwards a little bit to fit onto your lip nicely. I'm making decorative studs over the join, the overlap of my mug, and also on my dripper just for fun, but also it adds an extra bond. Then you need to fit your handles on. If they're a little bit wet still, then you need to put it to one side and let it dry for a bit longer. But you need to mark them 
and then scratch and slip both surfaces when you're ready to join them. Now that my dripper is just the right consistency for me, I am giving it some ridges. I've been told that these ridges are important for the dripper to work, so it doesn't, the paper doesn't stick to the, the inside of the dripper. And then I need to scratch and slip opposite edges of the dripper, on the one side and then on the other side, on the opposite side, um, in preparation for joining the dripper into the final shape. Then I'm going to pick up my dripper surround and put it on its upper edge so it's well supported on the table and then overlap the join and press it together. This is all a bit tricky and you have to be careful that you don't slide it around and catch the upper edge on the tabletop and distort it. So keep checking that you've got the upper edge rounded on the tabletop. You can see in, in that picture mine is slightly caught so you have to just watch that, but you must press it very well together at that seam from the inside and the outside. Just be very careful that you keep it round. If you keep bending it oval every time you move it around, it will start to crack where you are stressing it. So there's a little gap at the bottom of the dripper which is a perfect spot for the hole for the coffee to drip through and we need to just fill that up with a little strip of clay on the outside and then perhaps another little bit of clay on the inside to make sure that it's well joined over there. Then I just cut off the extra bit of clay on the outside and blend it in.
Now I'm checking all the components fit. The little stand that goes at the very bottom uh, needs to be joined to itself and then joined onto the disc. And then the disc needs to be joined onto the base of the dripper. a very thin little coil to put around the seam where the base of the dripper joins it so that there's a strong bond there.
Once everything is well joined, leave your dripper to settle up to be leather hard again before you put your handles on. When you're putting your handles on, just decide where they're going to go and see how they look next to each other. It was, it's nice if they match up very well, one above the other, when they're placed together. Then you need to scratch and slip both surfaces, being careful not to open and close your handle, otherwise you'll crack it and you'll have to make another one. Bond your handles very well by pressing from the inside and the outside at the same time. I like to put tiny little coils into the acute angle of the handle just to strengthen that bond and make sure it's well joined. And once the handles are on, you are really at the end of your journey and you must be very careful not to bump them. And if you are going to transport them for firing, just watch those handles because they're the most vulnerable part of your pot. So we've made our dripper and our coffee mug. I just want to show you underneath the coffee mug, I put a little piece of clay there and then I cut out the hole. And I used a little hole cutter, but you can use a drill bit. Don't make your hole too big. Um, I think this little bit of extra clay around the dripper, the hole, will make it drip more directly into the cup. You've got enough clay in your two kilograms to make two mugs and a dripper, or else one tall jug with your dripper, so that you pour, you drip your coffee into a jug and then pour into your cups. So we've also made our little stand for after you've dripped, you put your dripper onto this little stand so that you don't drip drips of coffee onto your counter. So it's up to you how you decorate both of them and um, I think that that's extra time you should put into it and enjoy it.